My name is Alexis Sanchez. I am the co-founder of Latinx Geeks, uh, which is a site to create a community of Latinx Geeks and you know, try to get us together and show that we are a community and we are here. Um, and you can find us everywhere on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, through Latinx Geeks. And I will have the panelists introduce themselves. What's up, everybody? I uh, hope you're having a good con so far. My name is Liz Perez, and I am one of the actors in Functional Series, which premiered on Friday night here. Hope y'all checked it out and enjoyed it. Um, but thank you for coming and supporting, supporting our, uh, our panel here. Um, hi, my name is Annie Segarra, um, AKA Annie Eleni online. I am a YouTuber, content creator, uh, activist, writer, long list on my business card. Um, and I identify as a queer, disabled, chronically ill Latinx and a gender fluid, non-binary woman. So my pronouns are she and they. You can use them interchangeably. That would make me really happy. Um, and uh, so I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is uh, it affects like my entire body. Um, but the reason I use a wheelchair is because it makes my uh, muscles and joints really fragile and in chronic pain. Um, so I'm ambulatory. I can walk for like 60 seconds or so at a time, um, but the rest of the time I do need to use my wheelchair. Okay. So the first thing is the reason we're having this panel again this year and because in the past year, we have new queer Latinx characters, but it's definitely not enough, and there's definitely different types of queer Latinx, so we're gonna focus on the past year, and you, know, you can go, go into 2017 if you want to, but that's really gonna be our focus, to show what has changed since our panel last year. Um, so my first question is gonna be, have you seen yourself so far being represented in media? Either movies, TVs, anything. Uh, you want to go? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll go. Um, well, it's definitely gotten better, right? As you mentioned, um, I I'm a really big fan of the show Good Trouble that's out, um, and I kind of see myself in Sierra Ramirez's character um, because she's. She's a uh, Latinx, you know, she's a woman in a very corporate space. Like, yes, it's startup-y and we know, you know, they're supposed to be more progressive and this and that, but that was me. That was like my past life. I would look around in my corporate space. I was working in like finance and accounting a couple years ago and no one looked like me. And I didn't feel like I had anybody to really lean on. It wasn't a diverse space. There wasn't a lot of women. There weren't really hardly any women of color. Um, so for her to like figure that out and she's navigating that, I really, like I see myself in that. Um, and I'm sure there are others that are just like, you know, going over my head right now, but I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> this question was fun. I forgot it like a, every panel I think I've done so far. Um, and like, it's, it's a, yeah, it's, um, okay, so I'm a person with a lot of identities and a lot going on, so I, as so far, there has been no character in uh, media that, like, perfectly is a reflection of who I am or who I could be. Um, the one historical figure I keep bringing up is Frida Kahlo, um, because she is a disabled, queer, Latinx artist, activist, um, who was very visible about like the fact that she lived the majority of her life in really severe chronic pain and with chronic illnesses and spent most of her time in bed and isolation. Um, and that reflected a lot in her art. Um, I do have other things that I saw myself in a little bit. Like, I, I can only ask for a little sample. I can only ask for a little bit. I can't ask for too much right now. Um, but another film would be Mosquita y Mari, where I saw a chubby brown Latina discovering her sexuality for the first time. I was like, wow, this is beautiful and awesome. Um, and for the first time in like, I don't know, maybe ever, I started, this is, this is you know, it's a, it's a white guy in the lead, but, 
Um, there's a new show on Netflix called Special, um, and it's written by, produced by, led by um, this uh, a white guy with uh, cerebral palsy who is gay. So I started watching that this morning, and I literally um, got real emotional and cried big tears because there were some elements about like queerness and disability that I just never ever seen um, represented before. And the ability to relate to something like that and when watching media, media was, uh, I don't know, just really impactful. It was like I've never, I think it's hard to constantly think that you're alone in experiencing something. Um, so it's really, really beautiful when like somebody creates a narrative that says, no, other people are out there who feel very similarly to you and who experience things very similarly to you. Um, and we're all kind of in this together. I know. And cheese. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, those, those are some good ones. And um, for me, it's definitely been one day at a time so far. Um, it's Elena's like the kind of character I wish I had been able to see when I was a teenager going through all that and seeing how well her family handles it and just being this dorky queer Latina who's very into her school stuff and all of that I very much relate to that doesn't cover all of my identities yet um, but it's 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 gotten closer it's definitely more than I could say for five years ago <laughs> so um, so in the past year what are the differences that you have seen in queer Latinx representation, um, both good and bad? Because we know there's definitely some problematic stuff still out there. <laughs> um, I don't watch it, but Brooklyn Nine-Nine happened, yes, right? So, uh, so I, I've heard I've heard lots of mixed things. I've heard great things about Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I've heard that they've played into some ableist tropes, like fake wheelchair users that stand up and stuff like that. Uh, so there's like a mixed bag with that. But I thought, I'm, I'm, that's like the one example I have really. So I don't know, we're just always gonna end our sentences with, I hope it gets I better. Hope it gets better. <laughs> yeah. Progress, progress is good. Yeah. Um, I don't, also like, I don't watch the show, but I know uh, Marvel's Runaways has mm -hmm. two Latinx characters yes. and I've always wanted to be a superhero myself, oh, yeah. so I'm like, this is fucking American cool, Thomas. I'm inspired, I want more of it, because we can be superheroes, we can be yes. doctors, we can be lawyers, we can be, be the people who save the day, we can be those leaders in film, TV, art, whatever kind of media, so I just want more of that, um, and now I'm like, okay, I'm definitely going to watch this show now. Oh yeah. It makes me want to watch it, because if I don't see people who look different, I'm not interested in it. Honestly, yeah, I could care less about, I don't know, cisgendered, white, male, <laughs> like, shows. I just can't do it anymore. Um, but yeah, it's, it's things like that, and I don't know, you know, the, what goes into that decision-making process. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not a casting director, I'm not the producer of the show, but it seems like those are, there's talented people out there. There are talented Latinx people out there, and it's just a matter of making those choices and making those decisions to put them in that position, to put us in that position because we exist. So just more of that. I want, I want all of that. And Marvel's Runaway has, it's actually, so Ariella Burr's character is a Latinx, but she is Latinx, and then we have Molly who is a Latinx character, but a lot of people haven't really uh, noticed, but Renzi Feliz is Afro-Latinx too, mm -hmm. so we have three out of like, six, seven characters that are Latinx in a show that doesn't focus on their being Latinx. Like, it's just, I think they're super. They're just trying to be story, super. You know? They're just being super so out there. That, like, that part is so, so awesome. Um, and for me, I think one of the uh, biggest changes, and we were just lucky enough to talk to them, uh, the stars of Vida. Vida, this super Latinx show and how it incorpor incorporates your queer identity with your Latinx identity. Have, and have you guys watched it yet? Oh, you gotta check it out. You have to, you have, first of all, stars. If you get stars, you know, there's a seven day free trial and then you can just cancel it. So just binge watch first season 
<laughs> and then get it again when the second season comes out, May 23rd, because the stars are all about it. They're like, yes, please. I, they, they're the ones that gave this, that advice to the panel. So, you know, watch it, talk about it, because you have Emma, who is a you know, powerful queer Latina who isn't dealing with her identity yet. She doesn't want labels, and she dealt a lot with a lot of heavy stuff, you know, coming out. And then you have Eddie, who is the sweetest character ever, uh, played by Sir, who's a non-binary Latinx person in real life. And when have we ever seen that? Like, I can't think of any other character, except um, maybe Sid in One Day at a Time, who the actress is of Mexican heritage on her mother's side, but I mean, we haven't seen that incorporated in the show yet, so, or if it will even be incorporated into the show yet. So for me, that's that's one of the um, the biggest that I, I can't wait for the second season. Seriously, May 23rd, be ready, be ready. Um, and you guys said that you haven't exactly watched some of those shows that you've heard about, so, where do you go to consume your Latinx media, if you do so? I mean, it's, it's, there's, not, there's not a lot of it happening on you know, big network television, yes. right? I mean, I was looking at Deadline the other day, and I was trying to figure out how many pilots were picked up that mm. either yeah. starred, you know, starred brown, black people, people who are different. It's like, there's not that many. Yeah. So network is not necessarily where I go to. Um, I find myself just like scrolling through Netflix or honestly just trying to be on Twitter to figure out what other people are watching. Um, I'm trying to be better at that and be more active on Twitter. But I think Netflix, Netflix is doing pretty well. They're doing, I mean, they could do better because they cancel one day at a time, which fucking sucks. Um, but I find myself going going there for it. Um, and Vida's on stars, but it's not, see, that's not really accessible yeah, to everybody. Just, that's the problem. It's cable's expensive, and then we have all these subscriptions, and on top of that, you want to add stars, and yeah. you don't necessarily want to add it for one show, but fucking do it, and then cancel it. No. <laughs> um, but I, I think I think Netflix is, is leading the way at this point in time. So that's where I find myself. Um, yeah. And then on Twitter, just trying to figure out what other people are doing. But also in the indie space, too, like oh, yeah. web series and people out here trying to create things. Yeah, and uh, YouTube just had a series that was picked up to go and Hentify. Yeah. I'm really excited yeah. about that. I'm excited that awesome. it's going to talk about and explore like the, gent uh, the gentrification of Boyle Heights, mm -hmm. the East LA community, like that one. I'm really excited for it. I'm super happy that Netflix picked it up to develop it. Yeah. And uh, Netflix and Macro, yeah. yeah. After two seasons or three, right? You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, who freaking knew that a few years in a few years Netflix was gonna like rule everything? Because yeah. uh, oh I think gosh. if I, I raise a hand, who has Netflix in this room? Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> And, yeah, 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 just, yeah, sure, yeah. have access to it. And for those who, who couldn't see that, that's that was uh, the majority of the room. Um, and um, I, yeah, that's pretty much what I use. Like, I don't really watch cable television at all. Um, I just use Netflix, Amazon Prime, um, and like that, that. That's something that kind of comes just because you want that two-day delivery. Like, you're like, okay, <laughs> now there's programming on here. We didn't really care about it that much. Some some people do like what's that show? What's that show? With the robots. Oh my gosh. Which love, one is it? Love and Robots? No no no. Uh, there's a there's a show about robots that everybody's <laughs> obsessed with with Evan Rachel Wood. Oh what's Westworld. Westworld. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You might you might purchase Amazon Prime for that show I guess. Yeah. But everything <laughs> 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 it's just an extra. Uh, so Netflix is really ruling everything, um, and I'm glad that like I see a little progress with shows like Special that I just started watching today. Very, very awesome. I'm a little envious. I did watch it. I watched the first episode and became very highly critical about everything. I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> everything in the pilot episode. I was like, no. And I think I, like I took a step back and and self-analyze, which I love to do. I'm like, it's because you're jealous. <laughs> it's because you want to be, uh, you know, uh, leading a, a project like this for a much more diverse crowd, for like, specifically like femmes of color 
that are queer and disabled. Um, which I'm like literally at this point of, are we in the summer yet? Not yet. But at this point in the year, I'm like really motivated to like uh, create my own project like that, like a series. So do it, yeah. do it, do it. We want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we will definitely get there. Um, <laughs> just to continue, just like with the talking about Netflix, I don't know. It's, it's just a very important way of. Access, accessing content. And I know it, it seems like that's kind of under attack right now too, um, with you know Roma and like qualifying for the Oscars and this and that. It's, it's just a very important way for people who can't, I couldn't afford cable when I was a kid. Like we, we had ca- cable rarely if ever. Basic, we had the, the rabbit ears, now I'm dating myself. But Netflix is what, like $7.99 a month and you can like share it with family, it's just, Oh, it went up. 9 dollars I don't know. I think I'm grandfathered in, so yay. Um, <laughs> oh, shit. See, I'm not even, pay attention to your credit card statements. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> See how much they're charging you for things. Yeah. But it's, it's just super important to have that accessibility mm-hmm. yeah. for our communities and for people who don't live here in the States to have access to that content as well in other countries. So, yeah, just yeah. hyping. I don't know. I'm hyping Netflix, I guess. Yeah. But. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yes, hi. But, um, I so I mean we are a lot of us, you know, Latinx, American born, or you know here in the U.S. And I'm hearing a lot of uh, shows that are in English, you know, for us. Do you consume any Latinx media in Spanish or any queer content in Spanish at all? I should do more of that. I'm working on it. So for me, like one of the things that I struggle with is just learning what being Latinx is for me. Mm-hmm. Um, because I didn't, I didn't grow up speaking Spanish at home. I'm trying to be better at it. I'm trying to learn. But that is a great way for me to actually learn. That's not, you know, sitting in front of Rosetta Stone or like calling family members from far away. But um, yeah, I'll take recommendations on that for sure. If like y'all have them, let me know. But um, I, there's nothing that like comes to mind that I watch on a regular basis, but I'm going to. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to watch like Spanish novellas with my mom, but um, <laughs> it like <sighs> my relationship with Spanish is super weird. First of all, I would love to know about some Spanish language uh, queer content um, outside of Mosquita and Mari, which I already yeah. watched. Um, <laughs> and. Uh, let me think. I, I can't, I cannot think of anything. I, I, we got Jane the Virgin, which is Spanglish, fun times, feels just like my house. But like, <laughs> I, at this point, I have a really kind of, not bizarre, because I'm sure that I'm not alone in it, but I have a particular relationship with Spanish, which is that uh, it was my first language. Um, and I lived in South America for the earlier parts of my childhood um, and then came back to the US uh, and I was met with a lot of like racist bullying in regards to like Spanish being my first language and having an accent and not speaking English very well um, which ultimately led me to like overcompensate and be like I'm gonna learn English better than all of you um, <laughs> and uh, watching Clueless to get the accent right and like, <laughs> And like, that's how you learn. You like go to the extremity and then you pull it back. You, you land somewhere in the middle, which is where I landed. Um, and so then all that like excess work that I did in like perfecting my English, uh, I lost a lot of Spanish on the way. And because of like, you know, the, the reason that why I um, was focused so hard on learning English um, was because of racism. Mm-hmm. Then I developed my own like internalized racism too, um, which made me want to distance myself from Latinx culture a lot. Um, and like every time like the family would gather and like have like these very like Latinx culture kind of fiestas parties, um, I would be like, well, I'm not like that Latino. Like like I'm not part of that culture. Um, which, but that. Um, and that's to say that's something that's pretty in the past because thankfully, like, you know, I'm older now and I'm working on, like, reconnecting with my culture and reconnecting with those roots um, and not being ashamed of the culture um, or ashamed of the Spanish language. And I find myself 
now um, doing stuff like there's the there's a Duolingo app where you can practice some Spanish yes. sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and very fortunately, uh, so I'm not the only disabled person in my house. My sister uh, is autistic and not very verbal and needs a lot of assistance with a lot of stuff. And her current caretaker basically only speaks Spanish right now. So I'm like, this is a person I feel comfortable with like practicing because she doesn't like make fun of me if I do something bad. She was so cute. She was like, your Spanish is great though. And I'm like, but I'm very highly critical of myself. And I'm like, yeah. every time I feel myself stumbling grammatically, I'm like, I am the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk to me. <laughs> uh, but I'm trying. So, and what would help is watching more Spanish language content. So if you have any like queer Spanish content to recommend, please let us know. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> about to talk about one because <laughs> I also was the uh, watching novelas with my mom and or being in Bolivia when I used to go for the summers and like for Christmas break watching novelas with my grandma eating like te con queso and like that whole thing like being in bed just being with my grandma listening to like these very adult adult storylines oh my gosh I was like <laughs> six I'm like who let me watch all these sexy I mean you know it's just like looking at the back and they're like oh. but like I was yeah. But they didn't care. They were like, just sit down and watch, just time to watch our novelas. But, you know, as I got older, I kind of like, kind of stepped away from that. And I don't think I have watched like a novella in like two, three years. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, recently there has been some actual positive representation in telenovelas for like queer media. Because, I mean, I don't know, have you guys seen um, that? Uh, La Rosa de Guadalupe or something? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, isn't that an old one? Or like they I rebooted it? I mean, they've like had like... So, they've been around for eight years. Yeah. And in those eight years, they've produced over 1,000 Yeah, because they're like daily new ones. And they have had some bad stuff in there. Like, they're <laughs> queer rep. Like, there's a whole storyline of this like, guy being gay and he just gets A's and dies. <laughs> and like the whole like, cause like you're supposed to like the whole thing is like, oh, he will ask that Virgen de Guadalupe to save you from something, and his whole thing was like, I'm gay, and then he died, and we were like, and like it's for the family to like feel better about, it. and I was like, well, I'm just watching it awkwardly with my mom, like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> this isn't good, you know that right? She's like mm. cleaning or something, I'm like, oh gosh, but. Last year, we did get a telenovela with, um, called Amara Muerte, which I personally haven't seen, but like I'm going to do the YouTube thing where you just watch all their scenes. Uh, Julia Pina. Thank you. Send it to us on Twitter so we can like blast that around. And because people are all about that. I read a couple articles like she... Rain introduced me to it. She's not even Latina. She's like, did you know about this? I'm like, that's how I get like all my queer media. <laughs> Rain, she knows it all. Ask her about it. But I was like, oh, that's interesting. I was like, I can actually watch that. And then there was another one earlier, um, Mi Familia Perfecta. Yeah. Which I think I someone yelled that at me last year because I was like, I don't know if there's anything I'm telling them. They were like, think about it. I was like, I got you. I'll, I'll look it up, I'll look it up. So, it is slowly getting better, definitely not there, and I'm sure there was some heavy backlash in our, in like South America and Central America about it, because you know that Catholicism is real. <laughs> um, but there, I, it's, it's, I feel like it's good to know that maybe our grandmas are learning a little bit something about us here, and you know, we'll be a little bit more accepting. But in the past year, there have been a bunch of new queer Latinas characters, and I have a whole list here, because we've got Elena Alvarez, Sid, um, almost the whole cast of Pose is like Afro-Latinx, they have so many out there, but MJ Rodriguez, who plays Blanca, is Afro-Latinx, and in Vida, we have Emma, Eddie, and Vida, the mom, uh, Claus, we have Quiet Anne, um, Charm, we will get into that, but they have no. Um, Orange is the New Black, Poppy, or Poppy is, well, I don't know how to say it. I didn't watch that scene, I got tired. Um, 
Jane the Virgin, we have RJ, the amazing Rosario Dawson, who was absolute perfection. Uh, the Deuce, Irene, Madam Secretary, Kat, Sarah Ramirez, who was here the first year, and really hoping she shows up one day again. And good to probably what she mentioned, Mariana, played by Sierra Ramirez. So we have all these new characters on TV that are queer Latinx characters, but we're not seeing the same thing in movies, in mm -hmm. film. I can't really think of one off the top of my head. Um, why do you think we're not seeing that change in, in film yet? Um, money and risk. Oh. It's a uh, white man making everything. <laughs> and um, they like, first of all, they can't write what they can't know. Like, they, they, if they're the ones with the money and the access to uh, the economic privilege to be creating these big Hollywood films, um, they, they're, they're the ones that are, for the most part, telling the stories, telling, and they're telling their stories or what they're familiar with, or their version of what they would like to see. Like, if they're going to make stories about people of color or people in the LGBT community or disabled people, they do it through their own lens. Um, so it's, it's kind of a bit of a glass ceiling issue um, because people who are in marginalized communities, more often than not, don't have the economic privilege to fund giant projects like that, which movies usually are. Um, and Oh, I'm getting a little brain fog, guys. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, so, I don't know. Until it, It's hard, but I guess what we can do is talk about it in spaces like these. Mm -hmm. And it was um, brought up last night that we should be as diverse people supporting one another as best we can and doing stuff like the Kickstarter fund projects and things like that so that we can start seeing more diverse stories told about our communities authentically in a far less harmful way, <laughs> hopefully. Right. Um, no, I mean, I 100% agree with you. I think the industry is a business at the end of the day, and a lot of times they don't see us as being marketable. Like, oh, you put a queer Latinx person as the lead, no one's going to watch that. No one's going to go to the movies and pay for that, but hello, like, we go to the movies all the time and we watch. Mm -hmm. And I think it's super important that we do support each other and uplift each other as people of color, um, and queer, especially queer people of color. But yeah, it's kind of a fucked up business. It's a fucked up business decision, and it's, it doesn't need to be that way because we're out here and we're spending the money. So I guess what we could do is you got to vote with your dollar. Like, like you mentioned, support people who are out here crowdfunding or trying to create content because we have to just uplift each other. Um, it's a business at the end of the day. I have a feeling in regards to the question about um, queer representation in, in film, it's like, I, I think it, it is slowly, slowly getting better, but Latinx representation is like, oh, they're Latinx, that's already a character. Like, mm -hmm. you're the spicy mm -hmm. Latino, spicy Latina. And, that, and so that's that, like, how do you, like, I think being aware of that and calling that out is well, but I wanted to ask you, is, like, from an actor's perspective, how like, you've dealt with that, or, like, if you ever have had a chance to speak up, like, yo. If I see uh, Latin, uh, sexy, da, 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 like, yes, we are those things, but it shouldn't be the first thing on the page. It's, what is this character intellectually? What, what, are, what is he, she, they, what are they going through? Um, so I steer clear of them. I see them. Sometimes I'll post it on Twitter, too, and just, like, call it out, like, this is bullshit, do better. Um, but for me, I see it all the time. I still see it all the time, and I'm like, we need to, like, people need to fucking do better. Um, I'm just like dropping f bombs. That's just, you know, hope you, hope y'all don't mind. Um, but it's it's frustrating because I feel like we're still being put in that box. It's like, what? It's 2019. You know, we have families. We can be superheroes. We can be these things too. Um, so just not putting my time and energy towards that is how I deal with it. And I, when I'm on set and I feel like something that's happening or the dialogue, it doesn't make sense or it's not working or it could be problematic. I typically try to have conversations with the directors and the creators about it. Um, not in a defensive way, but just saying, I don't 
it's just not working. I don't think that this is maybe the best way to approach it. I have some ideas, you know? Um, that's just part of the, it's part of the creative process, you know? It's, and, but it's something that we, like, we have to continue to advocate for ourselves and make those choices. Again, like, where do you put your money? Where do you put your time and energy? Put it into things that are productive for us, right, as queer Latinx people. Um, but I'm, I'm sick of seeing it. Honestly. Yeah, definitely, because, I mean, there's 55 million Latinx people in the U.S., and that number is only growing, and we buy, what was the last, like, 30% of movie tickets? We are a huge, untapped market, and let's be honest, your people are so hungry for content. We will pay for anything. It doesn't even have to be good. And we will pay for it. Please. So, I mean, yeah, it's it's such an untapped market, and I'm just like, it's a business. Why would right? We, there's like the two sides to that. Yeah, there's a it's a business. We're here. We're spending the money. Like, give us what we want. But that's a whole different conversation. We can go on for days. Oh yeah, definitely can. And you know, I'm seeing like luckily we are getting some Latinx movies in the next couple of years. You know, we have. Um, in the Heights that's finally getting made with a full Latinx cast and, you know, everything. But, you know, hopefully it's not a monolith because we are more than just one thing. We are more than just one collective people. We are all very, very different. And, I mean, I'm hoping to see, like, lesbian Latinas somewhere in there or, <laughs> you know, non-binary Latinx person, whatever. You know, just, just get something more in there. Um, but yeah, that's that's something we really need, and people are just so scared of it. Um, so we have talked about some positive representation and some problems, but I wanted to get into some of the problematic stuff. And as an actor, I'm sure you have seen that. But um, I like people that know me know that this is something I yell about a lot. But um, that whole. Uh, Latinx, that Italian looking Latinx people, because you know, they see us a certain way. That spice, oh yeah, hashtag spicy white, which was born at New York Comic Con two years ago. <laughs> um, but we have characters like Supergirl fandom, don't kill me. Maggie Sawyer, played by Floriana Lima, who is not at all Latinx, but they really doubled down on that she is Mexican in the show. Um, what are your feelings on that? All that glorious um, problem, you know? Because it happened more than once. I mean, come on, how old, how old were you guys when you found out that Catherine Zayden Jones is not Latinx? Today. Today. <laughs> yeah. what, is she, what is she like, Swedish? Definitely very European. Yeah, yeah. She is. But like, how many times has she played a Latinx character? <laughs> there was a there's a recent thing that she was trying to do, yes. right? Uh, she's supposed to be Colombian. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, mm, you're still doing this? Yeah. I mean, it's a problem, right? Cast yeah. cast the actual people. That's it. I mean, cast transgender people, cast people of color, cast people who come from these communities who live in East LA, Boyle Heights, who know it, you know what I mean? Um, those are my, I mean, those are my feelings on it. It's just a very simple thing, but it's such a taboo and like tough topic to talk about. But that's the reality of it. It's cast, cast yeah. us. Why do you think that is such a problem with casting? I think, I mean, ca I don't know, I'm not a casting director, yeah. but I imagine it's, it's a tough job. They're busy, they're seeing people constantly, and it's very, I think it could be easy to fall into, oh, I know this person, I've seen their work, so I'm just gonna use them. Um, and traditionally, that's been not people of color in the industry, so I think that's part of it. And then, obviously, I mean, there's probably some internal bias that people don't recognize as well, so I think it's a combination of that, that that's why that's not happening. Um, but yeah, traditionally people in the business who've been around for a long time are, yeah. you know, white, European, mm -hmm. that's just what it is. And I think they just, it's the easy choice. 
So let's save time. We already know what their rate is, how much we need to pay them. They're, they're reliable and they're great, you know, they're talented people. So let's just go that way. Let's not take a risk, as you mentioned earlier, and put this new, maybe unknown, or someone who is a person of color and queer. Can we trust them? Like, yes, you can trust us. We're talented. We can do it. Um, <laughs> so I think it's just the easy decision to make. It's like, uh, I'm trying to hold the thoughts together in my head because I get real riled up about mm-hmm. this topic. Um, <laughs> So it's partially that, right? Like they do the thing where they're like, well, we need a well-known name to sell tickets to get people in the seats. Mm -hmm. If you only do that, you are never going to have diverse people who can fill in the seats Mm -hmm. because you're going to pick from the same (laughs) little basket of people over and over and over again if diverse people are never given the opportunity to be in those films and TV, etc. And the other part is objectification. As again, these people with privilege and power, they view being transgender as a character trait. Mm-hmm. Being Latina <laughs> as a character trait. Being disabled as a character trait. Like, you're disabled, that is your character. That is the role that you are playing. Study how to do that. Like, no, 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 no. And it's that always is- the first thing in the breakdown. Yeah. Always like, the first thing. It's, and it's just not, and, I, and I've run out of ways to like attempt to communicate, like, um, being a person of color is not a character trait. Like, do you, what, is, what the hell does it mean to, like, play a black person, play a brown person, play an Asian person? What you're saying is to play to a stereotype that you believe to be true, right? And that, that, is, that is the same thing with every other marginalized identity, whether it's uh, sexuality or disability. To say, play that and assume that as an entire character on its own, it's objectifying. You, you're saying, you're communicating that you don't know anything about them as a community and you have no idea how diverse that community can be. Because in your mind, they're just one-dimensional figures. Identity is the character, and that's incorrect. I I don't know how many <laughs> times we're gonna have to like keep yeah. saying the same thing over and over and over for people to understand that, like, if you are hiring a Latina character, you make a casting call and say, "Latinas, come audition for the role." Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Not not can you play Latina? <laughs> Latina can you pass? Here. Can you pass for a while? Oh, that's yes. Well, like. So I, yes, right? And then when people attempt to do that, so Lily Manuel um, put out the casting call for Hamilton, mm-hmm. he specifically put in the casting call, this is a casting call for people of color mm-hmm. because the role of King George has already been filled. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They were threatened to sue him. Oh, yeah, reverse racism. Reverse racism. Um, racism, like it was a whole thing, like, right. set, like SAG after the and yeah. statement saying that this is a legal thing mm-hmm. that this person can do, mm-hmm. yeah. and y'all can just cry your white tears about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, like, yeah. like, like all those people that did that, I want to be like, do you want to check out the casting calls that people of color have to look at? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. We have to look at them every day. Like, so you can cry in a little corner and stay there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I think often what you're saying is really important is, is a risk. And it's a risk that most businesses, because that's what productions are, businesses, mm-hmm. are unwilling to take, they're unwilling to risk their project mm-hmm. to afford them yes. off the ground. Um, and the only reason that Hamilton did do that is because it's Hamilton. Mm-hmm. But no Broadway show, unless it's something like The Lion King, like something, yeah. like even Aladdin, mm-hmm. who's a Oh, God. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, but like those, so many of those things, the production, the folks who are behind production are unwilling to take the risk of the like the backlash of white supremacy mm-hmm. to put to name what it is that they're um, looking for, mm-hmm. and then to to stand up to stand behind saying those words and actually hiring those people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely, there is magic happening. <laughs> There's some of that magic happening, right? Yeah. It's and it's exciting because that's what we like. We need that. We need people to take those risk in reality it's not it's not a risk it's a it's a monetary whatever right it's a monetary risk but it's not 
it doesn't have to be. It doesn't need to be. It's just this social construct that's been created. So I'm super proud that Lynn did that and he made it specific. Like I want people of color here, specifically. And let me tell you, that was the best acting call I've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the assumption that it's a monetary risk it also speaks to the power and privilege that they have. Exactly. Too. Because they're like, oh, if we cast diverse people, it's not going to be as relatable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, relatable to who, honey? Like, <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah, don't. I'll, I'll rant about it for two hours. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have to do that. Um, so, the panel ends in like 20 minutes. So, I know you guys have questions, so let's just get right into that. <laughs> let's go. Yes. Um, hey. Hi. I forgot your name, but I saw... Liz. 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 I know your content creator. Awesome. Um, we have the creator here, too. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was wondering, like, as a... You can speak on a consumer of products and a creator of products. Um, I guess... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> I really am. And it's something that I'm learning about it too. And I think we need, we just need more of it. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> so. I was going to talk about Charm, but I was like, oh, let's take questions, but look at that, you went right into it, because <laughs> Charm has a queer Latina, Mel, and the actress that plays her is Latinx. But she has two sisters who are also supposed to be Latinx, so they're Afro-Latinx, played by black actresses who are not Latinx, and the creators and the actors um, really doubled down on the fact that, well, you know, we have multiracial, which means that it's okay for them to be Latinx and not understanding the complicated way that Latinx people can be with Afro-Latinx, Asian-Latinx, more mestizo looking, like all the varieties that we have and just being like, well, they're black, so it's okay, you know, they can be Latinx because that's just, you know, a culture. Not understanding that, well, not a culture, what? I'm trying to remember what the quote was. Is it saying everything is not white? Yeah. Yeah, and they were, yeah, and they were, they were just okay with just having these actresses and being like, well, no, no, they're, they're Latinx and it doesn't matter that they weren't that they didn't grow, in the show that they didn't grow up with that culture or anything and it was it was a very frustrating situation because they could have easily been like oh we're ha hiring we have these latinx characters afro latinx characters let's get afro latinx actors for this and one of the creators was like well you know i worked on jane the virgin so i know how you know representation works <laughs> not knowing that they completely mishandled this in a horrible way and just doubling down and stuff like that is so, so frustrating. So, yeah. <laughs> has taken like made her career on playing Latinx characters and I'm like when are you gonna stop doing that you know that these characters are supposed to be Latinx and you're actively going for these roles and there's a lot of um, actors that do that and that then will defend themselves by saying well you know I'm I'm a lot of things and we're like what are they and they're like you know a lot of things and then it turns out to be a bunch of European stuff and I'm like mm, that's not good enough right it's one of those things it's they, they definitely can't ask you straight up you know what how, what are you like how do you identify what's your sexuality you get to those conversations though at some point 
Um, but I just wish, to your point, I wish that people would lean into who they, who they actually are. That's what makes you stand out. That's what makes you special. That's what we need to see. So it's, it's another, you know, going back to taking a risk. Well, if I, if I, you know, out myself or identify that way, I'm not going to be able to play this other character or, you know, I identify as a lesbian. I'm never going to be able to play a straight person because that's like a thing too. So it's, it's a very tricky conversation to have. Um, but I, I agree with you that I think it's, it's on a lot of people and it's on us as actors as well to, I think, be forthcoming about that as much as we're comfortable with. I mean, more than we're comfortable with, right? Because that's why we're having this conversation. But it is on us to make those, deci those decisions as well and to take on projects that we know. Like, yeah. tell your story. What is my story? My story is gonna be different from yours and yours and yours. But lean into your own story. Lean into your who you are as a person. Um, the, the responsibility is across the board, but yeah, I agree that it also falls on actors as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think um, one thing that has started started in our communities that we're not just accepting it anymore. Um, we're not just gonna accept that you know white Latinx people are being cast as Afro Latinx or you know, non-Latinx, as Latinx. Um, I mean, let's be honest, that's why New Mutants is having so many problems. If you guys know about the New Mutants movie, which is one of the X-Men movies, they have two Afro-Latinx comic book characters that are supposed to be in there, um, Sunspot and uh, Cecilia Reyes, and they're Afro-Latinx, dark Afro-Latinx, and for, for uh, Roberto, Sunspot, his being black, and Afro-Latinx in Brazil is part of his story. It is a very important part of the story. And yeah, they got two Latinx actors to play them, but they're very white Latinx actors. And that's not okay anymore. And we have definitely called them out on Twitter, and I mean, that movie's, who knows if it's even gonna come out, and I'm kinda happy about that, because, hey look, karma. <laughs> Stop messing with us, like, it's, it's, it's time. So, yeah. Any other questions? Yes. So bring it back to like my days when I was very Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. We were all freaking out. I expect that I was here, but it's only play like either Afro or Latinx. Even at home, she was black. Oh, yeah. She was Afro. She was black. Never yeah. yeah, because people don't believe that we're, we're more than one thing. Like, I mean, I know Afro-Latinx I mean, I'm not Afro-Latinx, but I know I've heard this a lot from them that if you're Afro-Latinx and you speak Spanish, people are like, oh, you learned in high school? You're not, you can't be Latinx because you're black. I'm like, race and ethnicity are two very different things. Pick up a book. <laughs> and with the whole Santana situation, that was just a stereotype in the half of the spicy, fiery Latina who is like, just says nonsense all the time. And the classic, I only yell in Spanish when I'm really pissed off. And I mean, yeah, some of us do that, but you know, not all of us. <laughs> Y'all want to touch on that? Yeah. I mean, yes, but um, uh, I'm tired. Yeah. I'm just moderating. There's some back here. Um, so, with the L word. Oh, wow. Yeah, I couldn't even get it. Yeah, so we had No. <laughs> okay, she does. No, I know. No. Do have people color on the writing staff this time, so hopefully it'll be better. Yeah, isn't that our whole panel? Hopefully, one day they'll be better. Um. Mm. 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 
if she jumps on, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll get. Yeah. Should be like these rooms and like learning. Because I don't know enough. I want it. I don't know what they're gonna do. I don't really know where it's going or what they're trying to do with it or they get out of it. show. Like I just wish they had made a new show and not like the L word. Like they're just marketing on the name, but like just give us something new. <laughs> yes. Um, you mentioned that you like looked to historical figures for you to call, for example, and I totally relate to that. It's like when I found out you know, when I was younger, I read about her love letters with different women, and like, I just cried and was like, oh my god. <laughs> but um, like for me, uh, and a question for you is like, for your like nice media, like Chanel, like this, listening to music, it just is a whole different context of like the emotions. But anyway, I was wondering what other perhaps historical or like other women. <laughs> it's not a lot like sadly it's a very sad fact but like that like I kind of cling on to Frida to be that for me um, to the point that it gets a little bit fun of like they're like oh Annie brought up Frida for like the million <laughs> time today uh, but specifically at panels when we're talking about like representation and things like that um, and like I cling on her like like if like if it's it's a symbol right because I don't know who she is as a person we don't know we don't know her IRL right so it's a symbol of like this this is um, this is what's possible or this is um, this is a sense of community I can feel with somebody a relatability I can feel with somebody um, so that way these experiences that I, these experiences <coughs> that I have are not as isolated as they can feel, particularly um, literal isolation, because I'm like sick in bed so much. Um, that's literal, literal isolation, physical isolation. Um, so I, I, I wish that I had like a nice little marketplace of like <laughs> representation, but like it could be like, oh, I can be, uh, I can, I can look up to this person or this person. Um, but it's mostly her. She has actually a quote that I really love and I kind of like live my life by a little bit where she says, um, I have to fight with all my strength um, for, the, for all the little things that my health allows me to do uh, and put that energy toward the revolution, which is the only real reason for living. It's the way she saw things. Um, so, um, like just the fact that, you know, when you find somebody who um, verbalizes those things, who can put those feelings into words about, about like what you're going through in regards to like health and disability and how like you feel like you, you're so limited in the things that you can do, but so then you take the little things that you can do and you put them towards doing good and putting good out there. Um, and that's kind of how I live my life. So, <laughs> thank you, Frida. <laughs> I'm a Pisces. Don't mind if I cry. I know what you just said right now. My feelings have feelings. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like you said, there. I, I don't have um, just a plethora of examples in my mind because at least here in the United States, our own history was hidden from us. Like we weren't taught these things in school. We were taught. This specific story, like you know, the binary like, of the races. Exactly, and it's yes. like now, similar to you, I find myself trying to gravitate towards that and understand it and read more about it. And it sucks that it's still, it's not super accessible, right? And we have to get out there and like really search for it. Um, so I, yes, I love all of that, and I'm trying to be better at that too. It's just understanding my own history, like where we come from finding these examples that do exist. But again, they just, they weren't available, like they weren't taught to us here in the state. It was, I, that's not stuff that I learned about growing up when I was going to school and, right, so. Yeah, um, for me, it really has been the past couple of years making a very strong effort to find these people because I am a history major. And that's what I love and I'm trying to <coughs> learn about Latin America and, you know, my culture. And one of the people that I, discovered and even though like I mean she's such a prominent figure in the 
queer movement is Sylvia Rivera. And the more I learned about her, just the more amazing I learned that she was and her story and just being a queer Latina in that time fighting for everyone, it has, it, had, it was really meant something to me because I did not feel like I had a Latinx community in queer spaces and sometimes I still feel like I'm, I'm searching for that because I'm still very much isolated from it. So it's taking effort and so seeing someone like that from the beginning of the modern day queer movement is, is something very special to me. that have taken away a lot of our history and a lot of how our cultures, um, like pre cultures had a third gender. But we don't learn about that in all these indigenous cultures. And I mean, it's difficult because there very much is that, that belief that, you know, if you're not straight, you're deviant. There's a problem. I mean, to be honest, I'm not out with my family because I can't be. They are very much against it, vocally. Even though we have like three, four gay people in my family, all cousins, and we all know we're gay, but none of the adults know. And, and my family in Bolivia, like I could probably never tell them unless I really like decide I get to that point in my life with someone that maybe I'm like, okay, now, now is the time because I don't, I don't know what their reaction is going to be. So, I mean, it is, it, it's difficult. And, I think that's something we're gonna have to figure out together. <laughs> I think a part of that also is going back to like you know the content and things that we're watching. It's important that we create these stories and be a part of them to show how we are across this spectrum and to make it accessible to people in other you know other countries or here in the United States who like it's machismo like that's yeah. that's just the yeah. that's the culture. Um, but we can help change that narrative by creating these stories and making them available to people. I think that's where, as at least as creative people, that's where we start, right? So. Um, and it can also be really overwhelming to think about like uh, the way you phrase it, like a large project where it's representative of everybody. I don't think we're ever going to have any project that, you know, 
tells it like it is about every single person, unless, I don't know, they do like a web series of Humans of New York where they take an individual person and showcase them in every episode. But, you know, what's a easier way to go about doing that without <laughs> bothering Humans of New York is like, is just uh, being visible yourself. Um, and that's why I love YouTube so much because that's how I started kind of doing that for myself. I'm like, I didn't, I don't see myself anywhere. So, and, and I think what motivates that also is how, like you said, like there's a lot of ignorance that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Like people thinking like, you can't be vegetarian because you're Mexican or things like that. Um, uh, the most recent example being like, oh, you're not really disabled if you can stand up from your wheelchair or whatever. So like the, this kind of ignorance motivates the kind of stuff that I want to create. Um, so I want to tell these stories. And even if it's just like me and a camera and the YouTube website, like um, that's going to get at least some ears and eyes and some people learning and understanding the diversity within a culture. Um, and so little by little you can impact change instead of just like, <clears throat> I don't know, waiting for that day to come when you make like a big project happen because like I said, I have those kind of motivations too. I would love to make like a, a project. Uh, I've been talking about it a couple times uh, in this conference, but like uh, me and my group of friends are all like queer disabled femmes, all with like different chronic illnesses. And so our fantasy for the future of our lives is basically being like a golden girl's house where like, <laughs> where like we like all have like our own rooms and share a house because that's the only way we could afford <laughs> to like not live with our families anymore um and uh like kind of and from there we're like you know it'd be great like to turn that into like a series where people could see what like the diversity of our lives are like and and how like chronic illness isn't First of all, a tragedy. <laughs> it's not. It's not the end of the world when you're sick or when you're disabled. Um, but also, this like very particular life that we live, which is at the intersection of queerness and disability, um, and what those lives are like. So that's something that I would love to do in like some distant place in the future, probably. In the meantime, it's important to just use what we have, the tools that we have, which is the internet and social media and videos and all these things, and just like constantly be proactively visible for other people so that they can hopefully then start to understand that just because you have an identity hanging over your head that that identity is not a character that identity is not this kind of like one dimensional thing that is so easily understood we're a million different things okay so unfortunately we are out of time so um just let everyone know where they can find you on social media. Uh, you can find me at I Woke Up Legless on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, hit me up if you have questions after this and want to come up and talk to me. I have RBF sometimes, but I, I'm really happy to talk to everybody. Um, and also, uh, Functional Series is going to premiere. I'm plug. I'm shameless plugging our series. Oh, yeah, no, we like end of too. summer, fall of this year, Daniel. I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, he's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> So you can be on the lookout for that, but yes, thank you for coming. Um, and I'm Annie Elaney on everything. If you don't know how to spell that, it's on the back of my jacket actually today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just gave it to me, so I, I didn't do it myself, just so no one thinks ill of me. <laughs> um, Annie Elaney or Annie Sagara, and also I think... I don't know about everyone else on this panel. Our information should be on the website yes. where the panel is, yes. or like as like speakers. Um, so our social media handles will be there. And we'll retweet it again, so no worries. And you can find Latina Geeks on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And yeah, let us know what other stuff you're looking at. And thank you so much for being here.